my mic on? Yeah, why? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I don't know. It's you. It's Friday. Woohoo. I think it's always Friday. It kind of does feel like that. I feel like I'm always doing this. Yeah, I, really? People remind me. Another one of these? Another one of these? It's I Friday don't... again. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. That's how it right. works. That's how it works. It's Friday and then that happens again. All right, Randy, I'm with you. Okay, guys, let's crap o crack open the bottle of wine and get the show on the road. Let's do this. Where are we going? We're going to... Going on the road? Uh, well, yeah, actually, we have to. We have to unload the truck so we can get it back to Vanessa and Aaron because... Yeah, I think we're just giving them the stuff that's in there. It's like it's theirs now. <laughs> You deal with it. I feel like that's like a meaner. There's some freebies. They're like, this is not actually a present. It's an obligation. <laughs> I do want my mirror out of there. That's it. You don't need it. Oh, it's thank you. Now. It's theirs now. We've, we've gifted it. It's not really a like gift. It's more like a yeah. thrust upon. Yeah. Woo! Party! My voice cracked, but you can actually see. They can't probably. Butch, yes. Oh, finally getting I'm to watch it live. Hi. Oh, hey, Kyle. Butch. Scott. Oh, Construction right. life. Everybody's here. Even Ben's here. Even Ben made time for you. I think Ben always does. He does well. Ben's too nice to me. Ben, like, he's too nice to you. I think most people are. I think everyone's too <laughs> nice to you. <laughs> I'm like a secret jerk. You're not very secretive about it. Just, you know, I have a very special sense of humor. I think that a lot of people don't understand your sense of humor. I like, you drive my mom, my mom loves you, but you drive her crazy oh, with your sense of humor. It's the best. She's so, she takes it so well. It's like, it's... Just... And then you lean into it more, and you, like, do it more. Like, you're oh, yeah. poker, and then she's what's, just like... What's the point of, like, just, like, going halves these, you know? Yeah. When you see the opening, you go and you get in, and you just... Okay. What was George saying? A thin wedge? Who was saying that? George. When? When he was, uh, when was at our place? Whenever I was doing the workbench kids. Oh, last name V? Yeah. Andriska. He's like super fit. I mean. I think he is very fit. He like went super big into getting back in shape and getting like fit and healthy and, he did it. and all that. He accomplished that goal. Yeah. Because I was like, he's like very fit. Oh. It's, like, you, like I feel like he's very strong. I'm like, he can lift, like he's Atlas. He will lift uh, the yeah, world above his head. He's pretty ripped. Yeah. I mean like. Yeah. He's, he's got that body thing figured out. He's figured it out. He knows. Danny, Central Wisconsin, where? That's my area. This, so small. I don't know why it got so small, to be honest. <laughs> is, that, is it small for them too now? Yeah, that's what they see. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, I must have did this or something. I did. Whoa. <laughs> you know, we do this like almost a year and we still have no idea what we're doing. It's like as if I don't understand how this works and I have an iPhone, so. <laughs> it's pretty good today. It looks like the camera's on focus. It's not. I think it is from my perspective, but that means no, it's nothing. Obvious. It's just probably crap. It's too close. I haven't even tried this yet. Give me the signal, compression or whatever. <coughs> the bubbles got into me. Yes, bubbly wine. So what we're drinking is my favorite Prosecco. Hey, Wausau! That's, do you know where Nielsville is? Sure, That's where I'm from. Nielsville is. He might. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Wausau's a little far from Nielsville. My parents used to go to Wausau all the time to do square dancing. Was that like an hour and a half? Yeah. 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 That's a good ways. North. Look at my sweet chair. It's my work chair. What's up? My old work I chair. I can't see him sitting in a chair. I was like, you're just floating. All weird. All right, tell them what wine we're drinking. This is a Prosecco. Mm -hmm. We went to Italy and we had Prosecco. For like the first time and ever. It ruined us forever <laughs> because <laughs> now it's like, it's like easy drinking fun wine. Oh, I love it. So it's basically, it's like Italian champagne, I guess. You can think, think about it that way. But see, I don't like champagne as a rule. I don't like champagne either. But like, we both love Prosecco. This is like, like, love it. Actually good. <laughs> sorry about that champagne region. Yeah, sorry. I mean, and it might be that I've never had good champagne. Oh, you have. Oh, have It's I? all kind of like, meh. It's different from this Prosecco. It's... This is like a more, more sweeter, mm -hmm. fun. Yep wine yeah sparkly thing so i don't know if you i don't know i don't guess i don't know what i'm saying yeah i don't know either if you want to try something a little more bubbly and sweeter it's easy it's very easy drinking i guess is the right and we like this brand a lot yeah there's also bad prosecco there's brad we've the, learned the blue that. one we don't like the blue one i don't know we don't know brands we know colors we know colors the blue one's not that good <laughs> I always buy the orange one. <laughs> we buy orange. 
And there's two different kinds of orange color one. I mean, two orange bottles. Both orange bottles are good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the secret. I mean, we're really... We that's how wine-ish we are. We're yeah. very... We're super wine snob. We know our, our colors of wines. Real well. Just Real good labels, well. Just though. Mm -hmm. Not like the wine itself, just the labels. <laughs> <laughs> Orange is good. Oh, so that's our, our Prosecco wine suggestion for this week, if we're giving wine suggestions now. Actually... Right, for something a little more fun and bubbly and easy drinking, if you're not really into like heavier wines, this is a super fast, easy drinking. Gotta be careful, because you will drink the whole bottle, and you won't even know it. And you won't even feel it and until all of a sudden you'll get up and you'll be like, all of a sudden you're falling down the stairs. <laughs> but they gave us a free bottle when we went to Italy. And that. Oh, yeah, for the room, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, when yeah. we. So we, why? yeah. Why? Because. Would you tell them again something weird? No. When I filled out the form, they said, Why are you going? And I said, It's our first time away from our kids oh, yeah. because it had yeah. been. And so they're like, Great, we're going to add a free bottle of Prosecco and some like something else. And I forget, there's something else like nuts or something kind of weird. I don't know that at all. Or olives. I don't recall. I don't know. But we, uh, we liked it. And yeah. we still drink it now, so. No. Now that we've had a five-minute thing about Prosecco. Well, some people are like, you guys should talk more about the wines. That's true. Okay, so you're taking. So there you go. That See, we're, we're learning and we're improving. To improve this show into something. Don't we know are? what it's going to be yet. Learning this right now with right everyone. Now, I have the wine segment. <laughs> the official wine. We BS about the wine for a bit. Okay. And then we go on no, we'll to see. the next segment, which is something we haven't figured out yet. I am working with somebody to do a oh, that. a giveaway together of Matt's little... I mean, my job, I'm it's working. Like you work with people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt made the Minnesota cutting boards. You should go grab one really fast. Or I would, but Matt, can I do it? Oh, man. Okay. Go as slowly as possible, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry, he will. That's his, like, MO for sure. But... Matt made five or six of them, and I was like, what should we do with them? No, no, them? no. I, I finished them. Oh, we I finished made them? like, in 2012. I love that you can still hear them, but you can't see them. Of course. I'm still mic'd up. <laughs> His mic is still on. Anyway, so we did that. Oh, can we hear pancake in the background? Probably you can. Um, Hello. He's coming back. In any case, we have so many cutting boards that, frankly, we don't need another. And you're trying to like offload all my stuff. Okay. So we're like, I put this on my Instagram. What should we do with these? This this will not be a video because I started it before I was even making videos. That's how long it's been. Yeah. So I was like, I think we're gonna do a giveaway. I'm gonna it's gonna probably be on my Instagram, so sorry guys, you're gonna have to follow me on Instagram if you want yeah, it's to know big it. Big loss. Huh? Big loss on that one. This is? And then following you. Yeah, big loss. You're gonna see a lot of cute babies, food I eat, and me holding myself accountable of food, working out. Food I eat. That's about it. That, that's what my Instagram is. Food about to be eaten. In my belly. In, in, in there. Mm-hmm. In there. In there. So is that it about my little boards? I went to get all of them. I, get, I went so far to get them and you're down with them already? Well, I'm giving one to Lynn. Lynn, tell me if you want bigger or little. It's only one big one. Well, I know. That's why I need and I'm not making more. I have the templates. <laughs> But and, I'm not doing it again. And Lynn gets one because he generously let Matt stay at his house way back when for out of the kindness of his heart. So <laughs> I feel like that is more than enough to warrant a free cutting board. Yeah, that was a... Mm -hmm. Well, you can say why I was there. I just, yeah, I just went to his house for no reason. I, honestly, I forget. I just know it was in Texas. I went to speak at the Houston Woodworkers Club. Houston Houston mm -hmm. Woodworkers Club. How was it? All those club things. Mm -hmm. It's like either the Woodworkers Club of Houston or Houston Woodworkers Club. I forget what it is. Anyway, I did our thing on Saturday. There's like six different topics. Mm -hmm. Back right. when you used to go places and do public speaking. All right, we have some real questions no, no. from Jake. Any word on new merch? Yeah. That's your word? Eh. <laughs> My word is I have too many things going on right now. That's the, that's the word. I want him to. I want to do a lot more merch. But I haven't had time to even think about that uh -huh. or plan it or even like, you know, float some designs to the designer people to like, you know, come up with designs. So, mm -hmm. yes, and someday. Yeah, if anyone has any strong feelings on what they want. I got all kinds of ideas. Oh, you do? Never mind. He needs none. He's got them all in his head. I need like just the vector files from somebody just like figure that out. 
and I get them printed. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have more inventory stuff. <laughs> there you go. That's what we need. More inventory. Mm-hmm. You know how we're going here. Yeah. Put a stick back. back here. I have no idea. Because it's on, they're on the... The foam. The foam. So I don't think they're going to come off super nicely. Well, why don't you just put the foam up? It's weird, isn't it? Nah, you never. I, I might put them like up on the top there or something. Over here, yeah. Actually, Along you can't the, see this, but whatever it's called, the soffits. Is that yep, the soffits. I guess. It's, yeah, enough space up there. I might just hang them up there. There you go. I kind of like this plain. I'm kind of feeling like the almost minimalist vibe. Okay. All right. I don't it. know. <laughs> you can do that. People seem to like minimalist these days. They do. I mean, if you're on Instagram and you look at anyone's like interior designing house, it's there's a big sector of minimalistness. I mean, I got like white. A lot of it. A lot of white. So, I mean, we're getting we got that figured out. Mm-hmm. All right, from Brian. I still gotta paint these. I don't. I hate them. Oh my goodness. Finish painting the old house. Speaking of painting, because you want more things to paint. Oh, so. <laughs> In case anyone hasn't been following my adventures on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, I worked not much this week as far as like actual work goes because I am uh, trying to get this big thing off my plate, which is a house. Yeah. I'm trying to sell that bad boy. So this week I painted almost the entire interior of the house. So I went around and I cut in all the edges and all the corners, and every almost every single room in the entire house. Mm-hmm. It's be three days. Tomorrow I'm going back. I'll roll, hopefully, the entire house, and start painting some of the outside stuff, um, and maybe hopefully knock out some of the small things inside. Mm-hmm. And then I just have to do the garage, and then finish moving everything. And in theory, we should be able to offload this asset. Here's hoping. And you want to buy a house? Of, Matt has a lot of work to do, so Matt's taking some time off to do work that no one ever wants to really do, no but one has to do. to do. I don't want to do it, mm-hmm. but I will do it. Yep. So I won't be doing a whole lot of stuff. What do you mean? That you'll see. Oh, right. What's going to happen is people will probably be upset because they're going to be like, "Where's your real woodworking dude? Your woodworker, stop drinking wine." Yes, this is probably all we're going to. I probably I might have a video next week. If I have time to edit, mm-hmm. um, it will be the video on the workbench kit flattening, which I did this week. Right. So that'll be like a woodworking video. Mm-hmm. And I got like a bunch of solid videos to publish still. And we got to finish my bird. And you got to do the bird thing. I got like two hours left of it. I should do that tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, we got to do that too. A lot of things to do. It's tough. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so much to do. Uh huh. No one needs. Okay, this is like an attorney thing, but anytime attorneys are like, "Sorry, I'm so busy," like all attorneys groan because we're like, "Okay, you're not special for being busy." So <laughs> I think I'm that not special for being busy. I'm busy. I know. It's just a. Oh no, my my mic gets stored just when I get excited. That sounds about right. <laughs> I've got too many things. Like once, like always. I feel like it's my always my problem. It's mm-hmm. too many things. Too many things. I've gotten better about it, but still. So easy to fall into that trap. Yeah, he stopped, thankfully, taking custom work on. Like he doesn't, but he used to. I feel like feel pressure to do it for like not friends, but like friends of friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it would be like someone would talk to someone we know, and they'd be like, "I have a friend that's a woodworker," and then they'd be like, "Hey, we know you from so and so. Can you do this for us?" And then Matt would feel obligated to say yes because he doesn't want to make his friend who referred him feel sad. But at the end of the day, he's like, I don't have time to do this, or... I don't want to do it. Yeah, he wants to, like, make stuff how he likes it and not have to worry about making someone happy. So, I like, just, right I now... I need, like, things added to my list yeah. of things. Yeah. So, I don't know. Now I'm pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, I just don't do custom work. That's it. Just shut it down. Right. It makes it right. easier. Yeah. It does. It really does. If I get really mm-hmm. good at making birds, though, I would maybe do that. I mean, you I would just would, make a bunch, would, and then I would sell them. would starve. Oh, yeah, I know I works. would in real life. I meant like for fun. Oh. Not like I'm going to quit my job and just make birds. Well, then, then you're like, <laughs> you know, 
making it harder for the people who want to make birds for a living to make birds for a living. You can't you're win under, with you, apparently. You're undercutting everybody. Oh, my God. Let's make birds. I might make one. I think it's kind of fun. I was a little jealous of you, a little raspy, you know? I was like, I could do that. I don't like it right now. Why? You're I'm jealous. I'm going to sell them. I just want to try and make one. I told you we should make one together, and then I'd probably get mad at yours because yours would look, like, perfect. It would look just like other mats. Oh, well, yeah, you have, you have a model right there. Hmm? Wherever it is. Where'd it go? Where'd you put them? Right there. there. Up there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back back on track. Yeah. <laughs> Actual question from Scott. I'm working on a tiger maple box and I'm doing the whole thing traditional dye grain pop thing. Do okay. you think through dovetails would look bad with this finish or just mm. miter joints? Question. I would do a test on some end grain and compare it against the face grain and see how that dye I guess absorbs the end grain. Um, the tiger stripe that is like end grain presenting itself on the surface. So it could look kind of similar, but it might look weird. This will make the dovetails look really pronounced. Cool. So I'm actually kind of curious if you do this, if you do any tests or something, just to see like, you'll literally be able to see the exact outline of the dovetails. So they have to be pretty perfect too. Hmm. Cause that dye ain't gonna be hiding anything. It's gonna reveal every little sin <laughs> that you might have in that joint. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it could look pretty cool though. It's like one of those things, either it's gonna look really cool or it's not. Or not. Or not. <laughs> that's why you do like, a sample. There's like no middle ground on that one, I don't think. So that's why you do a sample so that way you know if you like it or not. Yeah, I would definitely do. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be like a dovetail joint. It could just be like, literally just dye the end grain of a board and compare that to a piece of face grain and see like what the contrast is. There you go. All right. Have not sure if this is the right place, but have you considered doing a campaign style secretary chest? So the answer is yes. You have considered. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to get more in. Well, I don't do more furniture projects that are more in that periodish mm -hmm. style. So that's like the serpentine chest is one of them. So yes, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not super into like hardcore furniture because. It's made to be knocked down, which like presents its own things. Like you make the compromise on a lot of things to make it knock down. If you want to go like full actual campaign furniture, um, but I don't know. Maybe the style is kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. It's a maybe. Maybe a yes. strong maybe. There's a lot of things that I want to make still. <laughs> I feel like that sounds higher on the list though. All right, from Jamie. I want to do another desk for sure. You need to do a desk for all of us. I mean, like, I know, like, a secretary desk. Oh. Like, the... With the drop-down? Probably not the... I probably wouldn't do the bookshelf thing on top. Just the I'll bottom. i just do the desk. Yeah. From Jamie, after spending a day slabbing up a 15-foot-long oak with a chainsaw mill, I know why you built your massive mill. There were, then, um, over at Wales. So, that's cool. Uh, Wales? Like, yeah. actual Wales? I think actual Wales. Wow. That's cool. Dang, Cool. We're in the UK. I know. If we're over there, I'm coming and hanging out with you, Jamie. So hopefully, I'll hopefully go over there this year, maybe. I know. I would like to go back. It's kind of weird. Like we used to like go places. All right, everyone says that, but I yeah, know, I know that. But it's like I used to not go. I actually like used to go places. You got to go like what I would say is really fancy, cool places. I mean, I don't get to go to London for my job, but you I've did. I've been to London. Oh. I like I flew in and left. All right, bring it down. <laughs> You got to go to the UK. That's not Still pretty cool. <laughs> I went out west. All right. Birmingham? That's right. kind of northish. That was still cool. Mm -hmm. I was going to say it's more cool that I went to like Crimson Guitars. That was yeah, cool. you did that too. That's cool. I don't know what place in that is. I mean, I know it's in the UK. I just don't know where. It's kind of like in the southwest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there. So from Tom. That was cool. Will you be slabbing more logs when spring comes? Probably not. And why is that? Uh, I got a lot, plenty to do. Oh, I didn't think that was going to be your answer. <laughs> what was the answer? That you don't know where you're going to put this sawmill. I don't know. I'll set, I think what I'll probably be doing is like setting it up and using it and then putting it away. Okay. One of those kind of deals. Okay. Um, but as far as like sawmill content, I don't really need any. You got a lot. Because I shot so much of it last fall. Oh, and you never edited it yet. And I'm still chugging through it okay. and I have like I, I started shooting one more the last one at the house mm -hmm. 
this week when I was there. All right. So I think there's still like, there's five. There are still to come? Yeah. So there is more content coming. There's still five sound videos to come, plus any of the ones I never edited from mm -hmm. however many years ago it's been. Wow. You know, I, I built that sound mill. This summer will be five years ago. I remember. It's scary how fast it goes. Like, yeah. I just look at Max. Five years. That's how I know. It's like almost five years already. Yeah, that's right. Actually, it was born right before it got turned on. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. From Devos Woodworking. Question about joinery for casework, like a hand tool cabinet. Doing my dominoes for the joinery. Concerned about, about joint strength with the mortisons on the upright panels and grain for the mortisons if placed horizontally. So you want to do a box, a wall hanging box, domino together. I don't think it'll be a huge problem. You gonna work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like how strong does it really need to be? It's kind of like the, the questions that we, should, we have, mm -hmm. I guess. And I don't think it'll be a, like, you, you're not going to be jumping on it. It's not going to be sustaining some kind of dynamic load. It's attached to a wall. Mm -hmm. So the loading gets transferred to the wall through the back, at least in most hand tool cabinets. So you can think the back panel itself, like if, let's say, you, let's say I did my hand tool cabinet with dominoes instead of through tenons, or I thought through more some ten, blah, through dovetails. <laughs> Told you. Just goes right there. It goes right to your brain. Uh, so my hand tool cabinet with uh, through dovetails, uh, with, wow, with dominoes instead of through dovetails. <laughs> there we go. One thing you have to consider with the design of this thing is the back panel is a piece of plywood that gets attached to the top, the sides, and the bottom, or actually mine split, but whatever. The back panel provides a ton of support, and that is what actually transfers into the wall. So your actual sides, that connection between the sides and the top gets reinforced sustain as much load as you probably think it does. Hmm. So I don't think that dominoes would be a problem. I mean, if you go, you know, try and hit it with a sledgehammer, it'll probably break, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend doing that to your hand tool cabinet regardless. Mm -hmm. So yeah, probably not. So are you still collecting goofy big trees to mill up? Yeah. Always, I think. Right? Until you like scream uncle, you're going to... I haven't been looking or okay. going out and getting any recently, but I still have a bunch of them here. I mean, I already have like, I don't know how many logs we have here already. Eight? You, I don't know. Or something like that? At least eight already just sitting there. What are you doing? She wants to say hi. She's so beautiful. Look at her, she's like on the computer. I'm sure my mic is it's so loud now because she's so close. Yeah, and mine too. I mean, she's just loud in general. She doesn't. She's like, oh, Dad, don't. <laughs> Are we boring you? She's more like, why aren't you sitting by me? I love her so much. I'm like getting more obsessed with her every day. Because all your kids are getting bigger than her. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Why? Well, no, she spends the most time with me. We sit and we work together all day. We work together, like you work, and she just sleeps. Oh no, she provides. She's a comfort dog. She, she provides have me. Any work to do. <laughs> so she's over there, like knitting a blanket or something. She's billing time. She's That's right. Work. She got billable hours to hit. <laughs> Trying to get some sweet pictures for the gram, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping in my bed. <laughs> I'm like tired. The dirtiest bed ever. Which is actually an old baby bed. Oh, little bit. Oh yeah. I can... Oh, Erin, so kind. Pancake! She's so beautiful. I just feel like it doesn't come across enough on the screen how beautiful she is. It doesn't, because you like, picked her up like this. Well, there you go. That's better. She... All right, everyone's like, okay, we can. No one looks good with a camera like facing like. She does. From down below? She still does. She's like it's not an alien thing. Yeah, that's cute. Burr. It's cute. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Finally, the real host shows up. <laughs> exactly. That's how she feels, too. She's like, I'm, I'm here to work. And one thing and do a week. Yeah, she's like, I just have to do the one thing, which is show my parents and go, hey, guys. What's up? I'm still here. Where's my super chat? Where's my super chat? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I need some milk bones. Yeah. Someone's got to feed this mouth. 
<laughs> snacks. <laughs> oh, okay, that's too funny. All right, want to real quick? Yeah, yeah. No? Yeah, no, no. Hit Maybe? With, hit with a real one. Hit with a real one? I'm just going to drop some knowledge to you. Oh, so Birmingham's in the middle of the UK, dum-dum. I'm mean, like, <laughs> from London. <laughs> Directionally from London. Luckily, this is recorded, so we can look up and see what the transcript says on what you actually right. said. That's great. Stenographer, read back. <laughs> read back the last question, please. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, this is a nice question. <laughs> Versus from, a mean question. People can ask any form of question. They would feel like it's their prerogative to ask, and if they want to ask a mean one, I just may not put it up. Why is your face like that? Yeah, why is it though? Great question. <laughs> Follow up. <laughs> Follow up question. Okay. All right. Michael, he's a little late to the show tonight, but how is the new house? How do you like I'm kind of interested what your, your answer is. Like, how is it? I like it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just nice to be like, like done looking for houses, I think. That helps a lot. I think regardless of where we moved to, that, uh, that would have been a factor. Yeah. Like, the emotional, like, I don't have to be looking at listings all the time and like, mm -hmm. oh, here's a notification. Please, 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 please don't suck. And then we go, oh, it, the house is awesome. It's two acres of land. Or the house is terrible. It's 20 acres of land and they're asking for a million dollars or something crazy like that. And you're like, Yeah, I don't no. miss that. I don't yeah. miss that at all. Yeah. I'm really happy that we uh, kind of ended up with this one. I think... What I like is like I wake up and like we look outside, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just nice. I don't know. The architect who's going to help with the remodel said something that I think is so accurate. He was doing a tour of the whole house and he walked into where our bedroom is and he's like, "Oh wow, this kind of feels like a treehouse because the way that they set up the windows, it has a perfect view on both sides. So you actually see the sun set every night and then the sun rise and then there's trees yeah. and it, it kind of does, it has shorter ceilings, right? Seven foot, yeah. So it does create this almost kind of like, like you're getting hugged a little bit. And it, it kind of does have this treehouse feel in a way that I really like. And once he said it, I was like, yeah, maybe that's why I like this room so much. Because technically the way that our second floor is set up is there's two masters and we have a small, the smaller master than the kids, which I'm, completely fine with because <laughs> I'm like this is way better like our smaller master is so much nicer just because of how it's set up yeah also we need a room that fits three children in it without them getting on top of each other yeah well, that's the only downside right now mm -hmm. is like all three kids are in one room mm -hmm. which is yeah I mean it's better than what it was before where two kids were in one room and then one kid was in our room with us mm-hmm well, at least we got kids out of our room. Nah, Max tries to sleep with me every single night. That's true. So there's yeah. that still. But at least there's no crib in our room. There is no crib in our room. That's nice. I, am, yeah. I go for walks now. Yeah, it is I nice. just walk around the property. And at the end of the day, like when our nanny leaves, we can take the kids out to like play before it gets dark. Yeah, just And it's outside. so much easier than our old house just because I don't know why. Because you have to worry about going to the street or going to the swamp or whatever. I guess. It's Get out of the swamp. We just like run out. Get out of the swamp. And if they're ahead of us, I'm not as concerned. Like we'll be maybe two minutes behind them with Eloise. And I'm not like, crap, where are the boys? Where are the boys? Because they're crazy. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. That's true. All right. Question about mill painting from David. Lots How is the mill painting? Were you just painting it? I moved it here. Oh. Is he talking about the Bridgeport? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so where I'm at with that is the, um, <laughs> what's the, the, uh, what's that term? God, it's good toys. I shouldn't link this stuff. Uh, <laughs> analysis by paralysis. Is that like a thing? Like, what's something similar to that? What? Analysis paralysis. I don't know what you're trying to say. Where you have like too many options and you don't know what to do. Oh, okay. What that's called? There's a term for that. I'm sure there is. Someone will tell me. Um, <laughs> so where that's at is... There are too many like directions and like paint choices and paint products as you go down that road. That, so it's paralyzed you. I don't know which one I'm gonna do. And then you start getting into like the coatings that I probably should use and then they become harder to obtain because they're not really like, you can't walk in the store and buy them. Okay, so the order online. Or no, what? you gotta find like, 
a commercial dealer oh. that would sell you only a gallon, mm -hmm. but they only sell them in drums. It's the correct term. Look at you. Look at me. No one words. <laughs> no one phrases. I know words and things. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I started stripping it at the old place to kind of see like how it would go. Uh, I used a, um, a rust removing and paint removing scotch bright pad thing on an angle grinder and that just like just went right through it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, so there, let me back up a second. There's like two different pathways you can go with painting uh, a bridge port or like a lathe or like any machine tool. You can either just like knock off the top coat and leave the base coat primer and all the filler they use to fill all of the defects in the casting and then just top coat it with something simple like Rust-Oleum something something something. Mm -hmm. Or you can take it all the way back down to the bare casting uh, take out all the old filler they used, which is probably soaked full of oil mm -hmm. and it's probably not going to let paint, new paint adhere to it very well. Take all that out, do a refill, do a high build primer, sand that back and smooth it out, and then do a industrial top coat on top of that. That's the direction I'm going to go. I've already committed to it because I have a casting down to bare cast iron right now. Um, and then it just becomes like there's a lot of different products that you can go with in that space like mm -hmm. different kinds of two-part high build primers that you can use they're sandable different kinds of for industrial top coats you can use um so yeah i don't know plus i got other things to do right now plus i'm going to have the way scraped so i have a lot of things to do on it still and a lot of things to do before that becomes a thing i need to do mm -hmm. but i got it out of the shop uh, out of the old house. Yeah, because we so That was too. kind of the biggest priority, just getting the heck out of there. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's where that sets. <laughs> well, I look at it every day now. This is my favorite question from Kyle. Do you even listen to him or do you just say, mm-hmm, while reading the chat? A little bit of both. I didn't know you were listening to me. <laughs> I just assumed you weren't. I'm an auditory learner, so I actually learn best by listening. Some, sometimes you surprise me. Really? I mean, you're like... Some some woodworking. I'm like, well, how do you know that? Because you said it once. <laughs> That's how I remember to, stuff. I listened to that one thing you said at one time. Yep. So yeah, I'm an auditory learner. So when I went to college and law school, I've never once skipped a class, which sounds ridiculous to a lot of people. But yeah, I've never missed a day of class in my life because that's how I would remember everything. Well, get your money's worth. Uh, I don't know about that. It's not expensive. But I got my money's worth. <laughs> So I'd say a little bit of both. I read the chat and then like listen for keywords. <laughs> I don't know. You're pretty good at like answering stuff. Like I try to be. I'm like you're mm -hmm. like, let me answer this for you. I'm like, oh. I'm a mom. You know the answer. Multi to that. <laughs> able to do multitasking. All right, from Bear Creek Woodworking. I'm pretty sure you have one of his planes too. Hi Lindsay and Matt. Mm -hmm. I hope you're enjoying your new house and property. I'm looking forward to watching Matt build his dream shop some year in the future. When are you thinking? Do you have an ETA on when your goal is? I think realistically four or five years. Okay, from today, this moment today. Conserv 2020. Conservatively One. six, optimistically three. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. We'll see how the business does in the next couple of years. Oh. That's where that's at. So then, I, walk, I walk back there and think about it sometimes yeah. now. So then Plus, I don't want to jump into it too soon before I know, like, this is exactly what want. Because, like, a building is kind of hard to, like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done something different. Or oops. I should have put it over here. <laughs> oops. I wish it was, like, half a whatever, half an acre over or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's kind of it, too. So I, I want to at least get a good full season. Mm -hmm. Like, we, got, we had, like, a really heavy rainstorm this week. So I went out while it was raining to see like what the drainage pattern was. It's not great up here. Up here is terrible. Not good. By the house. Back there is actually pretty good where I went up in the good. shop. So that's kind of nice because one of the areas where it kind of comes down is sort of flat. Mm -hmm. It's kind of low, but it doesn't go lower past that too. So it actually drained. Oh, that's so. nice. So then how long before you start the Arboretum? And will you include grafted trees? Uh, we're going to start that this year. It's going to be pretty simple basic right now which is basically just going to be transporting trans, transplanting i guess and transporting trees mm -hmm. from different areas of the property into the collection so yeah this year 
We are gonna graft the apple tree. We aren't we personally? I'll you gonna get some rootstock? I was gonna ask Mike to do it. He's the one who told me. Grafting's where I put it and I make it a new tree, yeah? Yeah, but you like you buy the rootstock and then you get like a shoot and you graft them together. Mike told me I can do it. I would just I don't know, are you gonna just buy them grafted, pre grafted? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So you got time for that? I don't know. To get like a little tree greenhouse area set up and like a little tree nursery and then you can plant them later or something? I want it. We have a crab apple tree. So I want to change it into like. That's not how that works. Okay, well then what's grafting? When they're like tiny. Well, Mike said we can change the tree. What's that? The change the whole tree? He said we can change. So I'm making crab apples and he's like, you can change it to a different kind of apple. That's a fully mature tree. He told me I could do it. I don't think it works like that when it's I trust like him. 50 years old. It's like when they're a year old and they're sapling. Put this out to the world. My friend. Can you graft a fully me, mature tree? I can Don't change so. my crab apple tree to like honey crisp. That's what he told me, and I trust him. He lives. I Matt can actually get to his house by the snowmobile, which I is kind of would, exciting. I think you'll kill it. Okay. If you do that. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. He Okay, so Andy knows. I've grafted over 500 apple and pear trees. What do you want to grow? Well, Andy, I want to grow honey crisp. Because it's the best apple. Because <laughs> the kids eat it like crazy. Because I buy them because I like them and then I never get to eat any of them. I don't get to eat any apples. The kids eat all the apples. They eat probably two apples a day, these kids, each of them. And he says you can graft the top of a tree. The top graft. So the answer is yeah. I guess like up on the canopy. So he said. And Andy has done over 500, so I think that he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm thinking like grafting where like it's like a rootstock to like. And you can do trunk. individual branches. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I don't know. You can do branches. Mm -hmm. See, every, everyone knows this. Oh, apparently you can do everyone. branches. It's like a thing everybody's doing. Everyone. They're out there like on the city streets graphing trees <laughs> left and right. Well, yeah, they're giving back to What the are you doing out there? Oh, I'm making this maple tree into a walnut tree. They're giving back to their community, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing my tree? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Do we have any maples on the property so you can make some syrup? Yes, but yes, they're not the very big. It's not that whole lot of them. Right. All these all these are maple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. That's one of those things. Just like it's like cool, like and it sounds like fun. It's a lot of work. And that's what I'm saying. Like it sounds like it'd be cool and fun, but then you think about it, like that's a lot of work. Well, we know that though because like where I grow up, a good family friend they make all the syrup that we eat, which is a large quantity of syrup, to be honest. Yeah. And it takes, I think like a hundred gallons of water to get like a gallon of- I think it's 40 or 50 to one. So yeah, it's some huge. Some along those lines. Uh, but that doesn't even include all the work. We would definitely, if the only way I would do it is if it was like, if all the trees were piped, so I didn't mm -hmm. have to go change buckets. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Cause like, that sounds terrible. Yeah. It's February, it's cold. There's like mm -hmm. four feet of snow. I'm carrying buckets of sap. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is cool though, from David. Sometimes you can graft similar trees together. We had a fruit salad tree that grew oranges, lemons, and limes. I think that would be really neat. I like fruit salad. Well, that won't grow here. Well, I don't want to grow here, but I, I like that concept. Like that would be really cool. A little bit of everything. Yeah, you're like, all right, what do I want? Mm, all from the same tree. It'd be fun. You can grow salad if you want, like actual lettuce salad. Oh, we are going to grow lettuce. I know. Okay. Salad salad. Salad salad. <laughs> You have to figure out where you're going to put that. Do a little garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, because it's going to be time to do that. Soon. I have a feeling Andy has a job in the tree world. Because he knows maple is 40 to 1, birch is 100 to 1. He knows. I believe him. Different products. I know wood. Andy knows He knows how to get the stuff out of there. Things that trees produce besides their bodies. Yeah, okay. See, I think that's what happened. Chuck's right. You were talking about grafting a fully grown tree means taking a branch from the tree and planting it in the ground to make a new one versus I wanted to like make a branch, a new tree. Yeah, I know you can do that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like, like the grafted walnut trees you see where it's like a little bit of rootstock and then it becomes something else from slab world. Some sad news though, Honeycrisp is a tough tree for home. I feel like <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. 
I have champagne taste. I want. But <laughs> is there a reason why? I'm not sure. It's probably it just takes is a lot it just of work because like you need enough trees to get like cross pollinate on, or mm. they're like a lot of maintenance. I don't know. Could be. I don't know anything about orchards. We don't know anything yet. But you did say you wanted to make a vineyard to make wine like your grandpa. Uh, well, we're going to do that too. I don't know if uh, there's going to be any vines available because you're actually supposed to pre-order them. Oh, we're getting from Mike. Okay, never mind. We got we got vines lined up, apparently. He said we could have some. Okay, dokie. So we got Same some, Mike who told me about grafting. We got some vines <laughs> lined up and yeah, I guess I'll just string up some cable and we'll get going. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So yeah, he's our friend. He lives like right down there. He has 80 acres. So he's got a lot more to play with. Yeah. He's on a snowmobile trail. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm going to miss. Yeah, Matt already has been like, you can just tell how different it Tuesday, is. Tuesday, it might snow. And suddenly he's like, please snow, please snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How's it going on like every day? Oh. That was like part of my thing. Yeah, like around three o'clock, he'd be like, I'm going to go for a ride. Oh, yeah. And he'd do like a couple laps. He'd go out. You know, he'd do all that fun stuff. He'd have yeah, a fun time. Get on the trails, explore a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a great question that I'm going to head out. This is a really good one for you to... To what? To massage? Yeah, massage yourself into. From John, how are you moving the sawmill over to the new place? I feel like there's a lot to going to be into it. I'm just going to have my forklift brought out there, and I'm just going to move everything with my forklift. Because I already own a forklift. You must love me. I do love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like waiting for people like, so I'm going to secretly buy a telehander. I'm going to do that for here, for when it gets here. How um, am I going to get off the trailer? It just lives on the trailer. Your oh. forklift, the same one you got on. Okay, so I got to have the forklift brought back and forth for every single load I bring. <clears throat> we might need to, yes. Okay, we'll see about that. Yeah. But yeah, I, have, I own a forklift. It's just sitting there most of the mm -hmm. time in the warehouse. So I'll just pay a trolling company and bring it up there. There you go. And then bring it back when I'm done. Mm -hmm. It should be pretty uneventful. I mean, it's going to be like the most... Don't say that. You just jinxed yourself. Good. Make me even better content. No. Otherwise, I'm worried it'd be too boring of a piece of content. <laughs> it's going to be a very boring video unless something goes bad. The, it fell off my forks as I picked it up, and it fell over. The prize. We already did that, and you actually... He cut it, so in the moving video, he cut some of the crazy stuff that happened. Mm. He was like, they don't need another There's fall. There's too many crazy things. That bandsaw... It fell. He did not show any of it. He didn't show me saving it. It wasn't very good anyway. I saved it. I don't know, but like, <laughs> you couldn't see anything. It was boring. Okay. All right, wait, wait, wait. Where'd it go? The answer to the honey crisp, oh, they're prone to disease and they have some weird oh, reactions, but sense. they do like cold climate, so Minnesota and, might and be like okay. Every orchard here has them. That makes sense, though, because um, it sounds like from Dennis, the University of Minnesota has developed Honeycrisp apples that, like, are perfect, which when we go to the Arboretum, Arboretum. the one in Chanhassen, they have, they have the where you can try oh, yeah, the yeah. ones that the university makes. Say, all the orchards here, like, all of them have Honeycrisp. Like, when we go apple picking, that's the only one we buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. All right, I'm going to head up. Yeah, I don't know anything about horticulture. Not yet. Not yet. Is that the right word? I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think Andy is going to be your new best friend. He just said you're going to need a telehander, so. All right. I know I am. <laughs> I think he's talking to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, Scott is saying you're going to need an ATV for the rest of the year. Yeah. So he doesn't care about it. I actually was like, don't get a snowmobile, just get an ATV. I think those are more fun, but. I don't know. I mean, like the snowmobile, you can go, like, go anywhere. There's like trails there and things so you can go banging i mean <laughs> just the fact that it's called banging you're funny it sold me it sold you then you're like i'm in i'm doing this i mean i guess it's only like the only term is like ditch banging but like i feel like pasture banging should be a thing because i do that all the time okay trail banging that's what it means playing on your little snowmobile yeah it seems like going in those just driving in those things but yeah. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Like, I never really, like, winter, I never really had, like a, good, like, a big connection with. Like, just, it's winter, whatever. I always liked the snow. I didn't like the cold too much. 
But now that it has nothing to do with the snow, mm -hmm. besides blow it, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's just fun. I think next year we'll do a little snowmobile trip. We'll go somewhere. Yeah. Head up somewhere and hit some cool trails and see some cool scenery. Have a lot of fun. All right. I got to head up. Here's a question from Chuck. Okay, I'm ready. I'm building a cross... A uh, cross-cut sled in the front and back wall are yellow pine. Do you think this is a terrible idea? Most use plywood. Uh, I used MDF for mine. Uh, you can use pine. You can use any hard woods. The thing you want for the fence. Taking this with me. Okay, bye. <laughs> on the on the front of the fe on the sled is something that's gonna be stable. And it's not going to distort or move a whole lot because that's okay. your that's a reference edge. The back fence doesn't matter like at all. Um, I mean, if if the, if you're using just regular pine, yellow pine. I mean, if it's like some pretty good, like clear pine that is maybe even quarter sawn or something along those lines and dry and it's not going to move on you a whole lot, I would see this probably just fine. It's not a big, really a big issue. Uh, if it's something you had, you've had sitting in the shop for a while, then you can mill it flat and let it sit around for a bit and see if it moves. If it doesn't move at all, then probably not an issue, but I wouldn't worry a whole lot about it. The other thing to consider too is it's going to get screwed, going to be screwed to the to the sled anyway, so the screws will help to kind of hold it in alignment so it doesn't move a whole lot. So I don't think it's going to be, it's not as big of a deal as I think people make it seem. All right, we're going to do one more here. Did it cost more for someone who wanted a workbench? Oh my God, why is this high? Oh, hang on a second. The thing you can't see is the different cameras. Hiding the question. Uh, did it cost more for someone who wanted a workbench kit milled like you just did? So I I milled one because one person asked me if I could do it. And I said, I have no idea what that would even cost because I don't even know like feasibly what it would take me to do. So I said, I will do it for you as a thank you for being a crazy person that believed in this idea and bought so early on in this. So it was a little perk for that person. I don't really know if I'm going to be even offering that as a thing because it was a lot <laughs> to do. But uh, yeah, I guess to answer the question, in this case, no, it did not cost more. But in the future, it may not be a thing that's even possible to have done. All right. I am going to, uh, I guess, go ahead and I guess. I'm gonna go back. This is some good stuff in here. I see a lot of, a lot of uh, information on the tree. So I'm gonna go back and read these in a little while. So have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Really appreciate you coming out and spending some time with us. And I will see you, yeah, you know, whatever, sometime next week, probably. <laughs> Bye.